for all the praise we just gave to Zach Taylor, and I am giving it up to him and Callahan. I really am. I'm giving it up to him. I didn't see this coming. Nobody saw this coming. And if you thought it was coming, you're lying to yourself. Um, but it's fair. And this isn't entirely on Callahan and Zach Taylor. But it certainly is fair to ask a... Is Joe Burrow running the offense when he plays? Because this is entirely different, strategically speaking, different looking offense entirely, which is what we expected Taylor to do and Callahan to do when Browning took over. But does Burrow have too much say in this thing? Because this is a well-rounded offense all of a sudden. They're pass blocking did not allow a sack yesterday. They're getting rid of the ball quicker. They're getting up under center. They're running play action. They're running the ball more. The screen game, all of a sudden, is a huge part of the offense. We didn't see any of that with Burrow. They never ran the ball. I mean, did all of a sudden that offensive line, which has started every single game together this season, did they all of a sudden wake up three weeks ago and become good run blockers? No. So why weren't they doing it? It's fair to ask that about Zach Taylor. Is he leaning too much on what Joe Burrow wants to do with this offense? That's number one. Second legitimate question is, where has Chase Brown been? Seriously. I know he was hurt for about three weeks here. But but where was he before that? Okay. And the other one is Tanner Hudson. They have this guy on the practice squad most of the year. He has become as rock solid a pass catching tight end as you can find this side of the Kelseys and and now Goddard's back in Philadelphia. This guy is a legitimate weapon on this team now. Where was he for 10, 11, or 12 weeks? No one is suggesting here on off the bench that the Bengals are better off without Burrow. But you have to say they look like more of a team the last two weeks. I mean, clearly there's an attitude in that locker room, and some of the guys said it yesterday, Mike Hilton after the game. We've got a lot of pride in the roster of these guys that have been back-to-back AFC championship games, most of whom are still here. And we need to prove to other people that we're more than just Joe Burrow. That's not a knock on Burrow. Trace, they look like a real football team. And you can say, well, who are they beaten? All I know is the last two weeks, they've beaten teams that as we sit here today would be in the playoffs. To Elliot's point, he always talks about how you look more. He thinks that means something a little bit more than just win the game like Reed, Reed does. And I think that if anything, you could say that this offense without question, is well, they are that factually, objectively, they've scored more points the last few weeks than they've scored all season long. The other thing I would say is like what when Casey was talking, the only thing that kept running through my mind was they're running an offense. Yep. That, that's what they're doing. Um, the, the first three weeks are what they are. I think that's an outlier. I think Reed has a a solid point about how, you know, when Joe Burrow's hurt, it's hard to put that offense in perspective, which goes back to the original argument that we've all been making or we were we were having at the beginning of the year is what well, what's more effective in football? Is it to run an actual offense or is it to sit back and try to play hero ball? And, and, and sometimes hero ball works. There's no doubt about it. LeBron James, Michael Jordan can go off and score 50, 60 points, but more times than not, the better way to be efficient in a, in a sporting event is to run a solid, well-planned offensive scheme that is going to be consistent and you can spread the wealth around. That's a fact. And sometimes you can, uh, like anything in life, sometimes you can take for granted having something elite and great and you try to use it a little more than you should and you start to rely on it way more than you should. And it almost feels as if that's what this Bengals team has done because they've certainly looked different. And you can't convince me that that obviously I'm not ever going to say that Jake Browning is better than Joe Burrow. That's a ridiculous statement to make and everybody knows that's a ridiculous statement to make. But if you allow what, what Joe Burrow is capable of doing, which is elite level stuff, to cloud your judgment and what you should ultimately stick to, then you have an issue. And I'm not suggesting that, that is, that's 100% what happened. Um, you know, you'll never know what, what Joe Burrow's offense would have done against the, the last three opponents that they, play, they played. 
but I would I would just venture to tell you that it's not like they played terrible defenses either. So I mean, the Colts aren't a terrible defense, and the Jaguars no. certainly aren't a terrible defense. Yep. Um, if you're a Bengals fan right now, looking forward, I would I, I would hope to think that you feel like there's really nothing in your way of getting to the postseason based yep. off of the way this team looks, Tom. I, I'm with you all the way. I mean, I, you know, look, if you'd asked me to, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, would they have any chance in Kansas City? And look, they're doing this one game at a time thing, and that's cliche, but it's true. And to Taylor's credit, he has kept the team focused on just the next game. And that's what they're just continuing to do. And they'll get ready on another short week this week to get ready for Minnesota. Minnesota presents its own set of challenges. They have an excellent defense. Excellent defense. And so, you know, they pitched a shutout yesterday. Yeah, they only scored three points, but they pitched a shutout yesterday. If you shut out in the NFL, is getting it done. Um, and look, some of you people in, in the chat, Molly, come on, Molly. I'm not saying that, like, like, like Trace just I'm not saying Browning is better than Burrow. Okay? I'm just saying that they've done something the last two weeks that when Burrow was here, they didn't do. And that is look like a well round. That's not, not all Burrow. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Zach Taylor calls the plays, not Burrow. Your thoughts, men. Reed? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's undoubtedly another great win. You know, you, you look at this Bengals team, and it, it, <laughs> there's certain things that you watch and you think, why wasn't this working previously? Like, like uh, for, for all the passes that Jake Brown admits, like half of his passes were still behind the line of scrimmage. All the big gains were screen plays. They were running screen plays when Joe Burrow's here. Why are they working now? Things that I just don't don't comprehend in, in terms of football. But the, the one thing I want to say about yesterday's game is a lot of talk over the past few weeks has been said about this Bengals defense, and it has been shredded to pieces, right? Giving up 500 yards against the Texans, yep. giving up 450 against the Ravens, so on and so forth. Bottom bottom third of the league in, in every statistical category this defense has. But they took on a Colts team that was a top 10 scoring offense in the league, right? Up there with the Detroit Lions ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs, so on and so forth. They gave up seven points. And I, and I threw this tweet out yesterday. When your defense gives up seven points, when you run the ball for 100-plus yards, and when you uh, – what was the third thing I said? When you uh, – Have a good punny game. When, no, yeah, well, that's not true. <laughs> when you don't get sacked, it's hard to be beaten. Yes. And that's what the Bengals are doing. You, you summed it up perfectly. They are just playing – as a full team now they're they're not relying on one person to win them games they're not they're not looking to to joe and like with save this season save this game they're just winning games as a full unit as we've wanted to see them do all season long i think and again i i, I could be wrong on this it seems like when when you have a backup quarterback and, and trace alluded to this maybe a couple weeks ago it seems like everybody's kind of playing for not like an FU mentality, but you know we're still here, right? Just because our quarterback's gone, we still have we st we're still alive out here. It's not just Joe Burrow and, and and the mess around gang. It's a whole team. So I think what you're seeing is a little bit of uh, inspired football by by a Bengals roster that everybody ruled out, counted out. It's why I think expectations uh, can can make or break a team. High expectations for the Bengals. I thought the Bengals were going to go to a Super Bowl this year. Those expectations were tempered. Right now, everybody thinks they're dead. They're playing like they're, they're more alive than ever. I think they look great. The issue I, I'll have, eventually, at some point, somebody's going to figure out these screen passes, right? right? Because Jake Browning looks great. I'm not saying Jake Browning doesn't look great. But he accounts for about 150 yards out of his 275 from screen passes. And again, maybe, maybe that's part of the game plan, the, the diversity of the play calling. I get it. Joe Burrow obviously never was, was unable to do that, or they were unable to do that with him. The run game looks better than ever. Again, they somehow didn't do that with Joe Burrow. I find that to be strange. Uh, but I, I listen, Jake Browning has been a, a way better quarterback than anybody in here has given him credit for, except for Trace. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at what's occurring right now. The thing that, you know, two weeks ago after the Steelers game, and I just want to throw this point in, and you, you've given the, the coaching staff credit. Like, two weeks ago, we were we were saying, Zach Taylor needs to go. We need him out of this city. Is this is this roster any good? Yada, yada, yada. And in six days, we scored 68 points. We gave up just seven points to one of the top off scoring offenses in the league. All these things that 
can we temper the, the Zach Taylor, Taylor hate for at least a couple more weeks? Because he has proven after going to AFC Championship in back-to-back -back years, now his star quarterback's gone, and he's won two huge games against playoff teams in back-to-back -back weeks. For sure. So, yeah, for he deserves sure. a lot of credit. We give it up to him. We definitely give it up to him. We're not afraid to give it up to a guy when they deliver the goods, nor are we afraid of a guy when he does it. It's a what-have-you-done-for-me world. That's why they're paid the big bucks That's right. to be coaches in the NFL. But I do, think it's, I do think it's a little bit fair to question why this offense looks so good right now and why it looks so abysmal with Joe Burrow. But, you know, think yeah. about yeah. that yeah. a second. You're, you're, you're spot on, and that's what I was saying a minute ago. Think about that for a second. You had, arguably, one of the top two quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, he was hurt, and I think it's safe to say he was significant. Not hurt, injured. There's a difference. Burrow was injured at the beginning of the year. But once he got healthy, and yeah, they had the nice game against the 49ers, and they were good against Buffalo. They weren't great. They were good. Uh, Arizona, the, eh, Arizona, I mean, come on. They got one pick six. It came back the other way. It's the only reason they reached 30 points. It is fair to ask, how in the world do they look like this? And they're not playing New England. They're not playing Carolina, like Trey said a minute ago. The, the, the only team in the NFL that had more sacks going into the game yesterday than the Indianapolis Colts were the Baltimore Ravens. Right. It's the only team. And you don't give up a sack. And every time we turned around, the Bengals were in shotgun with Burrow back there, and he's getting killed. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot what Trace alluded to. You just look at what the offense was, which was hero ball for the first – what eight nine weeks when burrow finally right. got when burrow finally got healthy you could see what that ended up looking like i mean he torched the the 49ers but eventually teams start to catch up on the hero ball stuff and you can't be at 100 percent, 110 percent hero ball all the time and that's what the offense pretty much turned into now we're, we're looking at a team that is able to give a lot of easy stuff they actually got the run game going. And we're sitting here asking ourselves, well, why, why is it looking so good? Well, it's because Zach Taylor is actually drawing up plays that help the players to where they don't have to go out and play hero ball all the time. It's a great point. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, they are not asked to do it all. Joe Mixon isn't asked to do everything by himself. They're doing screens. They're doing a lot of easy, short, quick slants, things that are quick processing, things like that. And yes, that stuff worked for Joe Burrow, but when you're not at 110% with Joe Burrow in that offense, it doesn't look pretty. There's no, there's no doubt there's a reason why he didn't get sacked yesterday, and it's not because the offensive line blocked better. It, it's, it's, yeah. You get the ball out quick. Yep. You decide what you want to do before the play begins. And let's face it, Joe Burrow – has been has been elite at holding on to the ball and making some unbelievable plays. Everybody marveled at the play against the 49ers, right? Right. Jake Browning's not holding on to the ball long enough to do something like that more times than not. He's not trying to to, to extend plays. Now, if you want to argue whether you should try to extend plays or not, I, I don't, I'm not trying to get into that debate. But I do think that there's something to be said that sometimes Joe Burrow holds on to the ball and it's not – I'm not this isn't I'm not knocking him, but I'm saying that's why he gets sacked more times than not. Yeah. Now, I, there are certainly times where there's a guy that breaks through the line and sacks Joe Burrow just because they got beat. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, even if you go back and rewatch the playoff game against the Tennessee Titans when he got sacked nine times, yep. and everyone talked about, oh my God, he got sacked nine times. Well, Joe Burrow's holding on to the ball incredibly long sometimes, and he's trying to extend plays. And and I'm, I'll say it again play hero ball, and you know what? That hero ball works out sometimes for him. The same reason it works out for Josh Allen sometimes. Mahomes. How many guys do you know that can go to the sideline and then essentially get themselves in a position where they can throw a, a fadeaway throw down the field and it works out? Not many guys. So when you have that ability to do that, you try to do that. There's not that many guys that try to do those types of things is what I'm getting at. And Jake Browning, again, I'm not saying he's better for it, but there's a reason why he didn't get sacked. And it has nothing to do with the offensive line magically blocking significantly better. Yeah. I mean, they, they ran the ball 32 times, only passed 25. Yep. I mean, it's a complete different mentality than it was three weeks ago.